Today on Locked On Red Wings, we're going to look at the free agency forwards, starting with just one guy, and he's the guy to look for, Johnny Goudreau. You're Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I am a producer over at 97 Won the Ticket, while Scotty is a freelance journalist for the Detroit News and host at Lockdown Tigers. And uh, today, Scotty, we are going to talk finally about Johnny Goudreau. And I had a little bit of a heart attack the other day because there was a report coming out of um, on Twitter saying that he apparently was close to an extension with the Calgary Flames, and I got mad. I said, he better not, because that's very selfish of the Calgary Flames, because I was going to milk an entire episode about this guy. <laughs> well, thankfully, his agent came out very quickly and said, that is not true. And uh, here we sit today, about to talk about Johnny Goudreau and the possibility of the most alluring free agent in this free agent class, if he's a fit in Detroit and what it would take to get him here. he's gonna He is going to be the one guy we're going to talk about to kick off our uh, series on the offensive free agents this off season. Yeah, he is correct. And, and like, I mean, golly, could you imagine what a season he had? Good you know, gracious, man. He had over a hundred points the first time in his career. He had over a hundred points. This was he like a, a literal 75. Yeah. This is a literal proven year. All so not only did he, you know, put up 40 goals, which is insane. That's like, you know, we were talking about how important that is from other wingers and David Pasternak and Alex to But then he goes out there and also has 75 assists. So not only is he a goal scorer, he's also a playmaking machine. He does it all. And the, the one, the one thing you can say about Johnny Goudreau is that he is a little undersized at five foot nine. But if you're going to be undersized anywhere on the ice, winger is the one spot that it is probably the most acceptable to be undersized. You don't want an undersized center. You don't undersized defenseman. You don't undersized, undersized goalies. Undersized winger who gets over 100 points you can deal with. He, he I mean, he was second. He literally was second in the NHL in points. Yeah. He was I mean, tied, it, tied for second with Huberto. So. And granted, this was his first ever. This was a prove-it year for him. I mean, he was coming sure. into the season about to be a free agent. He needed to prove that he could be an elite left wing at the NHL level. Well, and he hadn't played to too get many that full contract. seasons. I mean, that was no, kind he of had the thing. Seasons. Like, uh, you know, and 20, he hit the COVID year was weird, obviously. And then the year before that, he missed uh, a little bit of time. But, I mean, he, he always had, you know, like all-stars and uh, w w got votes for, for a lot of different awards. But just putting together, like, the... It, I don't even know how to it, how to explain it really, but it was it was just like the, there we everybody wanted to see everything come together for one season, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, and I mean he's never had a bad season with for the sure. Calgary Flames. Like that's not that's not what I was trying to say. I mean he was a fourth round pick, and this is a guy who's exploded onto the scene as a 100 point player. Um, the last two seasons, obviously be, being shortened from COVID, they played 70 career or 70 NHL games in 1920 when COVID first hit. He had 58 points that year, probably his worst year production wise, uh, which was coming off the cusp of a 99 point year the year before yeah. 36 games in 63 and Man, his first 35, 60 as like your second best season of your career. Like uh, that's, that's wild to, to, to be that good where a, where a 35, 60 is like, yeah, like that's solid, but like you could do better. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, and like yeah. even his even his less productive years in air quotes were 60 and 70 point seasons, which is still right. very, very productive. But then this year with something to prove saying like, hey, obviously he had 49 points in 56 games last year. So, you you know, you look at the, the points per game. It's still close to a point in that covid shortened year, that 56 game season. But this year, full 82 games played 115 points. So the question becomes. Assuming hypothetically he doesn't sign with Calgary Flames because he wants to secure his bag, what is it going to take for Steve Eisman to lure this guy to Detroit? And then B, kind of the similar conversation we've had with Debrinkit and um, Pasternak is, would they even want to come here in the first place? Yeah, you know, a lot of money and uh, <laughs> and a lot, a lot of, of money and, and a lot of convincing that uh, that you know showing. 
I think that our, you know, showing the, the, the these free agents and these acquisitions, the roster and showing them, you know, the farm system and kind of the direction of the team. I, I think that is a sales pitch. And, and I think that that is part of these conversations with the, these guys that, that we bring in. I, I think that absolutely is. So I think that and, and you know, don't get it twisted, a, a, a whole lot of money. Well, and here's the thing that's really nice about Johnny Goudreau as well is that you're, the only thing you're giving up to get a guy like Johnny Goudreau in this offseason is money. Right. And with David Pasternak and Alex Debrinkit, you'd have to trade assets and then sign them to an extension, which granted right. you would have them for one more year. This guy, you're going to have to give the money up front. But yeah, but who cares? Exactly. So the, the, the his biggest downside, though, is Pasternak and Debrinkit are two years and four years younger, respectively, where Goudreau's 28. So he this is, I mean, granted, the best he can get is a 115 point season. That's still <laughs> really freaking good. Um, and if anyone can convince Johnny Goudreau to come to Detroit on a, in a team that's still in a rebuild, it's Steve Eiserman. But that is the Detroit Red Wings' biggest shortcoming here is that it's a, still a rebuilding team, and that you know, as much as it would be nice, again, we go back to that conversation of it would be so sexy to have a guy like Johnny Goudreau on the team, 115 point getter, get butts in the seat. And honestly, it would be a huge step forward for this rebuild. You're going to commit a lot of money to a guy like Johnny Goudreau, a lot, a lot of your $35 million cap space, probably about at least a third of that $35 million is going to go to Johnny Goudreau, but you're only going to give up that $10 million. You'll probably have to give him. Whereas again, with Pasternak and to you'd be giving up players and prospects and draft picks right. to get there as well. And it's like, this could be a huge step forward in terms of offensive production for this rebuild, but I couldn't, wouldn't, I would feel like the money could better be spent elsewhere, further filling out the depth areas we need, like the other yeah, five so defensemen. Like the devil's advocate for that is that we have so much cap that you can do both. Yeah. Like 35 million is like an asinine amount of, of, of cap space. Like it's hard to, to wrap your, the fact that we could give good row 10, 12 mil and still have, you know, uh, <laughs> what is that math T over 20 mil you know still at our disposal is, is is ridiculous and so i think that that is that's you know the devil's advocate advocate of that is if we had 20 mil that would be an insane amount of cap space to have this offseason you could get him and still have eight or nine mil you know per year obviously left over and and the fact that that we have as much cap as we have is is you know you, you can very much do both and and i also think that i mean we've been going over free agency for a while are there really too many players out there that are great long-term depth pieces that you're going to spend money on probably not too terribly many so like go get the top end go get the 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 best player in in the free agent market at any position go get one of the best players in the nhl and then over the next year year and a half two years you continue using the money left over and the farm system to continue filling out the depth. I don't think it has to be all one or the other, which is why, like, you know, why not? Why not go for it? Well, we also talk a lot about, like, comparables to other teams. And, you know, generally speaking, you don't spend on a big-time free agent unless that's your last fin piece you need to finish your roster. But then we also also often compare it to, you know, the Detroit Tigers and what they did to jumpstart their rebuild back in the mid 2000s and the signing of Maglio Ordonez and Padre Rodriguez and how that, you know, didn't take them a step forward, but three steps forward in their rebuild. And again, it would be, he would be a huge get, but you also just have to keep in mind too that, yeah, you have another $20 million after that, assuming you sign him, I guess. And maybe in segment two here, we'll break down what you can expect out of a contract for a guy like Johnny Goudreau at 28 years old. But you also would have to think about too, is you have to extend Dylan Larkin here pretty quickly. You have to also extend Tyler Bertuzzi here so shortly. And they're going to be off asking for, you yeah. know, pretty big upticks in but pay as well. You're and also that's eat up a lot of your remaining cap for sure. But you're also then dropping the current contracts they have that are already included. I mean, what, how, how many million difference are we talking about between the contract they have currently and the new deal they're going to get a few million dollars. That's it. That's true. That is a, that is a solid point. Uh, we'll talk about what we can expect out of a Johnny Goudreau contract and then just more or less riff about the pros and cons of bringing a guy as electrifying as Johnny Goudreau in. 
Um, but first, got to talk to you guys today about Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all of the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's basketball championship matchup, the NHL, Stanley Cup final, Major League Baseball, and of course, the latest fighting news from MMA and UFC to boxing. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sport wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts. Segment two, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Scotty and I are talking about the possibility of the Detroit Red Wings uh, bringing in Johnny Goudreau. This is the first episode of uh, us looking at the offensive free agents and just Johnny Goudreau being who he is, having an 115-point season. We kind of determined that part one should be dedicated to him. And we've kind of not not really like a structure to this conversation, just kind of free-flowing back and forth, bouncing ideas off pros and cons. We should probably talk about what a contract for a guy like this would look like. And you know, who he'd get paid more than who he'd get paid less than. I, I don't know what kind of, I, what kind of where you're coming from Scotty in terms of ideas and uh, contract wise. Yeah. I'm, I, I think I kind of alluded to it earlier, but I think somewhere around 10 to 12 a year and as many years as anyone is willing to give him. So eight in Calgary, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sure they're uh, playing that card and, and I'm sure that, uh, that, that ev- pretty at, at 20 at 28, like, I'm pretty sure everybody's going to be offering him that seven, eight years. I, I mean, I, I would find it hard to believe that that he's not going to get um, the max years. And and yeah, as, as far as as far as uh, as far as dollar amount, like I said, I'm I'm thinking, yeah, probably somewhere in that t- ten to twelve. I guess is kind of a wide a wide you know two million dollars is kind of a wide gap in the NHL, but somewhere around there, double digit million. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. It does make sense. And I, I'm right there with you. You're looking at guys who are comparable contract wise. I mean, Austin Matthews this past season, he, so he signed his contract in, um, he signed his contract in 2019, 2020. That pays him 11.6 million a year. Connor McDavid, who is like in the best player in hockey is making 12.5 and he signed his contract in 2018, 2019. I cannot see, and I get understand that this contract was signed a few years ago when the cap was less. Lower, yeah. But I can't see him making more than Connor McDavid, even even on the free agent market. I just cannot see it because every single player or every single GM is going to go to Johnny Goudreau and say, "This is the best player in hockey." And yeah, you had one 115 point season, but Connor McDavid has had one, two, three, four, five 100 point seasons and one 97 point season. You do not get uh, Connor McDavid money. Austin Matthews making 11.6 has had one 100 point season. I can see him making in the 12 to 11 point or 10 to 11.5 range. And I think years he'll max out on a 28 years old. I think teams are going to sign him to win now. And then like most Stanley cup championship teams and teams that get there, but just don't quite win it, suffer the consequences later. The Detroit Red Wings were there for for a long time with some of the long contracts they had signed. Um, but you're signing him for, like Miguel Cabrera of the Detroit Tigers. You sign him to that long-term contract to try and win a championship now. Now, the Tigers didn't. And now they're paying the price of, he's still the best hitter on that team, but we don't have to get down that, <laughs> that, that, <clears throat> that don't, track. Don't, That's don't more start, the, man. Don't start. We don't have to start there. But Johnny you know, Goudreau, 20 You know the title of yesterday's old. show? The no. title of yesterday's Tiger show, or today's rather, at that time we're recording this, but yesterday, as you're listening to this, was literally rock bottom. Mm. So, I mean, JJ Hinch didn't come out of the press room or locker room for like an hour. No, that was uh, that was the players. It was the, the players, players only. Well, we don't have to get the into that. Johnny yeah, we don't have to get into that. But um, yeah, no, I, I I totally agree. I think it's I think it's about uh. 11 give or take a mil i think that's a good um a good a good starting point there and and if he got if he got less than 10 i think i would be surprised and if he there's got, no way he gets less right and and if he got more than 11 and a half i'd also be surprised so i think somewhere probably in that in that 10 to 11 and a half range well yeah you'll get another guy like artemi panarin who's the second or third highest played player in the league third second highest played um another guy electric offense 
does it both ways. Doesn't have a single 100 point season though. Multiple 90 point seasons, but not a single 100 point season yet. And he's making 11.6, just like Austin Matthews. So I think you're looking at 11.6 to probably 12. Then I will wreck Connor. I think probably somewhere between 11.6 and 12, but not more than Connor McDavid's 12.5. No, yeah, for sure. No, that's yeah, right in the range you're looking at. Um, but it's going to be a max contract wherever he goes. There, he's going to be asking for this is the place I want to be for the rest of my career. I want full. Was it eight years at UFA or seven years UFA, eight years if you stay with the team you're with? Yep. So that'll take him to his age 35 season. And after that, like, who knows where he'll be at? I mean, he could have aged gracefully like Ovi and still be potting 50 goals a game, or he could have, you know, fallen off a complete cliff. So who knows? Yeah. And, and, and that's, again, like, that's the thing that, like, with this much money at, at your disposal, I mean, why not? And, and, and at the end of the day, I, I put my faith into Steve's hands and I know that's not incredible analysis because kind of anybody who's anybody could say that, but it, you know, if, if he has concerns about the, the longevity, because there, I mean, there is, he, he's had, he, he's had a lot of, of, of very solid seasons, but this is clearly like a whole different level than he's ever done. Yeah. He, like, and it he's a new high. Right. And, and it's very much, um, the outlier as far as peak goes. So if, if that's, if that is a concern for somebody, then like, sure. But again, with the amount of money we have and like, you are going to have to extend some people, but I, I mean, like not that many people and, and like a couple of them already have deals. So you're just kind of adding a couple mil onto what they're already getting paid. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't think it's a, uh, a super, big like downside of a thing and and i mean we're, we're seeing with the tigers uh you know keep bringing it back to that i know but uh th there are certainly players underperform sometimes but uh after they get deals but i i really it's it's hard you know the tigers didn't go sign the dude that had like the second most whatever like home runs in baseball or something like that you know what i mean like the second highest ops in the league like 115 points is, is, is different, man. It, it is, it is. And I understand like, again, it's just, he's such a, he is a sexy free agent. Uh, just like looking at his point production and what he could bring the team goal scoring wise. And I know there's a lot of cap space, but it just, and Max Boltman, I believe it was mentioned this, maybe it was Prashanth mentioned that, you know, it's winger. It's not necessarily a premium position. Right. I think it was, I think it was uh Max. We were talking about Marco Casper as a center and Honestly, center I is think, a premium. I position. think it was both of them. <laughs> Probably both. I think, um, I think Prashant had something to say about that too. Yeah. He's like every year you can go out there and you can get a, a goal scoring winger. Granted, not as prolific as Johnny Goudreau is, but really where the Detroit Red Wings need to spend their money and their time is center depth. And defense. And I know, like you said, there's $35 million. They can give him 10 or 11 and still have, you know, just over or just under $20 million left to extend guys and bring in more free agents. But I'm at this position where, like, I just want to see the Red Wings. And again, like, if they sign Johnny Goudreau tomorrow, I'd be like, you'd see me in here with a, a Johnny Goudreau jersey day one. I'd be pumped about it. But I'm just realistically thinking that they'd be better served to spend that money on a player or a multitude of players to help shore up all their glaring weaknesses. And then once they are, have are a much more solidified team, go out there and get the, the big time free agent, because they're not just Johnny Goudreau away from being a Stanley cup contender. I don't want to be the Edmonton Oilers that I'm, yeah, I'm trying desperately. I've talked so much smack about Ken Holland and that's such a top, top heavy team. They have no other depth. And so I just don't sure. want to spend 50% or more on my cap on two or three players, which the Red Wings aren't going to do. But that's that is my hesitancy with sending a guy like Johnny Goudreau at this juncture. For sure, I I, I just I I think the counter to that is there's. At we, what point we, do you spend we, money, right? <laughs> well, yeah, but like we aren't we aren't Goudreau away for sure. Like I I don't think anyone would disagree with that. But there's no combination of players currently available for thirty five, even with thirty five million cap that that you're away from. You you could go have all the best value deals ever and, and go and get seven players for, for 30 that add up to 35 mil. And uh, like this team's not winning a cup next year. So no, you're, you're, you're completely right. It's, it's going to be, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of really solid players that could be UFAs um, in 2023, but you know, 
none of them are none of them are Johnny Goudreau as of this point. You know, they might go out there and have phenomenal seasons. There's some really exciting guys that could be free agents next year that could be great, but none of them are Johnny Goudreau and scoring 115 points. So, you know, both Kane and Taze are going to be UFAs next year, but I don't think you want to bring in either of those guys at their age. You know, Ryan O'Reilly would be a really interesting one. He's going to, he's 32 years old. So he'll be 33 at that time. So he's mm-hmm. on the back half of his prime. Uh, Tarasenko as well. He's a right winger though. So it's just, you're, you know, going, doing the, obviously Pasternak will be a free agent if he, you know, doesn't right. extend or sign somewhere, somewhere else, you know, in the meantime, but there's just none of these guys right now are Johnny Goudreau, except for Pasternak, except for Pasternak. It's the only guy. Oh, oh, timeout. Backstep. Nathan McKinnon is a UFA uh, 2023, but he's going to extend with Colorado. So let's not even talk about that. <laughs> he, he's, he is. Yeah, gonna I, I would be, I would be floored if they didn't just give him. <laughs> Could you imagine him, ex- him leaving Colorado and signing with Detroit? <laughs> like I know the, for, I know the rivalry is pretty much dead. <laughs> that would be crazy. But can you imagine the Twitter crap storm? Oh, that it would, would be. Yeah, it would be. That would be an all time day. That'd be oh, crazy. that'd be insane. Also, hey, Thomas Tatar and Gust- Gustav Nyquist are going to be free agents next se- offseason. Oh, well, you should have started back. with that. Yeah, I don't need Johnny. Bring them back. Let's yeah, go. I don't need Goudreau. Just give me those two. <laughs> yeah, you should have started with the show with that. Oh, well, that's it. I think that's a good place to end the conversation. I think for sure. my stance is I would love it. I just don't see it as realistically happening. What is your official stance just to put a nail in it? Uh, I don't see it realistically happening, but I don't think there's too many downsides to doing it. Perfect. Fair enough. Uh, let's move on to our final segment then. And that's gonna be, how do you feel about a Friday? How do you feel about the Red Wings signing Johnny Goudreau? I would be very (laughs) floored. I'd be so pumped. That's what I, that's the point I was trying to get across is like, I'm being trying to be pragmatic about it and look at the bigger picture. But if they sign Johnny Goudreau tomorrow, which can't happen because for agency doesn't open up till July 13th, but if they sign him tomorrow, I'd be like, oh my God, like we're so good now. And like I said, it'd be the first one wearing a jersey. Um, sure. How is your lemon tree doing? How do you feel about your lemon tree? It's doing well, man. It's doing well. It, uh, Like I said, fully outside. Um, it's uh, the, the one problem we're getting into right now is it has rained so much over the last like 10 days that it's getting too much water. So we literally cut like a like a floor to put over the um the like big ass pot that it's in <laughs> so that we could like n- have it not get so much like it's literally getting overwatered. Like some of the leaves are starting to turn yellow. So we had to like literally cover up put put a like tarp over the soil. So that it uh, so that it would get a little bit less water for for a couple of days. Um, and plants are so weird. Like we need water to survive, but not too much. Right. Yeah. It's it's really weird. It's really annoying, actually. You know, the most annoying thing about the lemon tree is that the I guess you would call them symptoms. It's the the plants, the trees' reaction to too much water is the exact same as the plants' reaction to not enough water. So you literally like sometimes just don't know. You're like, I don't know. Is it getting too much? Is it getting not enough? I have no clue. Um, it's not feeling well. That's all I know. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so you kind of just have to try one thing. And then if it gets worse, you're like, oh, crap. You start like dumping water in it. Uh, but this one was it, it's ranged so much over the last like 10 days, two weeks that, that we're pretty confident that it's uh, that it's um, too much too much water so we got a tarp over for now it's already looking a little bit better um and then yeah we'll uh we'll take that off in a day or two hmm. so that's how it's doing good glad to glad to hear that it's still alive and you haven't yeah. done it yet no well i would never <laughs> um how do you how do you feel about the detroit tigers i have to give my opinions every day how do you feel about them <laughs> deeply 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 disappointed um we talked a lot a lot too much on this podcast about the Tigers before the season started because we were both so excited uh, about the prospect of this team finally being good. And then, I mean, I think it's a combination of the ball being worse um, or deadened. I know every team's suffering from that, but I think that brought the talent of average players back to where it was. I mean, Robbie Grossman hit 20 home run, 24 home runs last season. 20, uh, 20 with, season, yeah. With a, with a juiced ball. 
And now that it's deadened, you're seeing that, oh, he doesn't actually have that much pop. And so yeah. I think a lot of us were maybe a, had bought into a, too much of that Tigers team because they were overperforming. And now, I mean, Akil Badu's injured and in the minors. Spencer Torkelson needs to get sent back down, let's be honest. Jonathan Scope's hitting less than 200 after a contract extension. I mean, it's just it, uh, Miguel Cabrera is the has the best average on the team, and he's just a pure contact hitter at this point. It's he's 38 years old. Yeah, the, there's just the, it's the lack of power is is remarkable. I've never seen have, I, like I I've said this on the show on the Tiger show a bunch. I have, and this isn't like dramatic effect, like whatever. Like uh, you are literally watching history. I, I have straight up never seen anything like it before in my life with any team. Detroit or not, it's it, it's it's the most unexplainable, like unpredictable going into the season thing I've I've ever seen. They have less home runs in these sixty games than the Braves do in their what thirteen game winning streak. Fourteen, I don't know if it yeah. ended or not. Aaron Judge is but. approaching single handedly the amount of home runs he has on the season is approaching the Tigers team home run total on the entire season. It's like thirty two or something like that, right? Yeah, and we're, I, we're I at heard 32 I, and he's at like 26 or 27 at the time. of this. I was listening to the radio today and they were talking about how the Tigers have scored more than two runs in only 30 of their 62 games so far. This yeah, season. they've scored five runs. I think we've scored five runs less times than we've been shut out this year. And what's remarkable and five is five isn't like that much. <laughs> and I feel like the most damning thing of it all is that despite all of that, the Tigers actually have some pretty decent pitching despite all the injuries oh, yeah. and all the, all the next man. It's the only reason they don't have comfortably the worst record in all of baseball is literally yeah. because of the pitching. Yeah. It's, and that's like the most insulting part is they, they finally can cobble together good pitching or decent pitching with next man up like guy, like Bo Brisky and Alex Fido were probably never going to see the major leagues this season until all these injuries happened. And uh, before getting Brisky blown up. Yes. Sure. Yeah. But before getting blown up the other night, Fido was, consistently going on the mound and giving the Tigers five, two runs or less, five innings, two runs or less. And it's like no run support. And that's just the most insulting part is the pitching has been doing everything they can giving the Tigers a chance and the Tigers, the offense is just not there. Yeah. It's been, it's been really, like I said, I, I've truly never seen anything like it. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about the Obi-Wan Kenobi show? Do you watch it? So here's the thing. I'm not up to date. Uh, but I did watch the first two episodes and it was great. So my, I have, uh, I've seen two of, three, but not four. So, so two of my, uh, two of my best friends are like super, super into it, like super into it. And I'm not like that, but I watch it with them because like they're super into it. And it, it you know, I watched the first episode and it was good. So I, I only watch it, uh, with them and we just haven't hung out since, uh, since the second episode came out. So, I, I am, I'm whatever we're on four is out now. So I'm, I'm a couple behind, but I, I did, I did like it. There was some, uh, I'll call it, uh, interesting acting for sure. <laughs> but, uh, that, that kind of is the, is, is how it goes with, with some star Wars and that is kind of yeah. makes star Wars, star Wars. So it's okay. It hasn't been perfect, but it's been fine. It's not. I mean, I think the peak Star Wars. I enjoy stories, watching it. it and like, exactly, I, I'm not like a super. Like I said, I'm not like a super, like analytical Star Wars fan. And like all this, you know, like I'm. I just like, do I enjoy it or not? And I and I have fun watching it with my friends. So I think there's some really good acting performances. I think Ewan McGregor I, I agree. is good. I agree. Um, there's some less than stellar acting performances and also interesting true. interesting direction. Um, I think my biggest problem with it is just it feels like Episode Four. I mean, it's it's spoiler alert, guys. It's Leia getting captured and somebody has to go rescue her. She gets captured by the Empire and somebody has to go capture her. But right. it's just stretched out across six episodes. It's just constantly running away for what? Well, four episodes so far. And so right. I just did. Uh, but like, it's been fine. Yeah, That's, uh, my, my my honestly, the craziest thing to me is just that. Like a six year old girl can apparently just outrun every adult on the planet <laughs> my my friends bring that up it's all the crazy. time it's ridiculous. yeah that that's like the the weird acting 
I it's actually like think that that I think that little girl one of the woods her, especially it's really I, I don't know her name but the girl playing young Leia like oh she's killing know, it she's, she's doing a great job it. with the line she's really given she's been doing a yeah. great job I agree. um I don't know how I feel about just like she just seems way I get it I understand like Leia was super smart but she's just way way wiser than her years would and I guess that's for the sure. point I and mean, that's the yeah, point of it sure. but it's just sometimes uh, my it only problem is that she's like if someone is looking for her she turns into Usain Bolt like that's like it's crazy <laughs> um we're coming up on the end here and i didn't use this earlier and i i'm, I'm mad at myself because i just realized i didn't look at view it but I, I love these player cards and this is johnny goudreau's player card just to showcase how <laughs> not bad insane his even strength offense is. his goals above replacement at even strength this last year expected goals above replacement was 19 goals his actual goals above replacement is 23. Now you see these two asterisks here and you see this line. That means that he broke the formula. Cause if you, if you scroll down here and right here, an indication of two asterisks after the titles of EV offense or EV de uh, defense plot indicates the player's value for that specific chart was outside the default plotting range. The default plotting range for the component charts. Y axis are the 2.5% minimum and 97.5%. Uh, maximum percentiles for the entire specific data set per position. So he is his offense for expected and actual are outside what they can plot for even strength expected goals above replacement. That's insane. His pure insane. offensive ability is outside the range that they can plot. His overall percentile is 92%. His overall offensive is 99%. And his defensive is 58%. It's fine. Who cares? You're, yeah. Uh, well, he. He, defensively, he is not a liability. You can see that on the graph here. He has nothing that's in the red. That's right. all you which can ask after, for out of a guy who's 115 what, points. Right, which after what we also went through defensively, yeah. just as a team, 58, it, it would be, you know, feel like Lidstrom. So it's fine. So he is insane. Oh, man. His, his, if you look at it three years, it's the same. It didn't budge. So even though this year was an anomaly for him points wise, or maybe building up that to that and accumulating to that, if you look at his expected goals above replacement across three years, it's largely the same. He's so that man. is that's really actually really um, great to see when you're looking at a player and see if he can keep up that pro uh, production. Yeah. But that's gonna wrap it up for us. Sorry, I got to that after the. How did you feel about it Friday? But I just remembered and I'm like, I gotta share it regardless. Uh, any final thoughts, man? We ball. Thanks for making Lockdown Red Wings your first but listen every single day. I hate you. Now make your second listen to Lockdown NHL. Lockdown NHL covers the playoffs like no other. Hear the latest in news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. I have been doing a poor job of remembering that you're going to do that every single time. Usually I'm like ready for it, but the last like week and a half, I completely forget. And then you actually surprise me with it. And then every time I'm like, God dang it. This guy. This guy. This guy, this guy over here. All right. Be back with you guys on Monday with a new episode. Continuing this uh, free agency options for forward. Same time, same place. To your team every day. Every day.